International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to the short version of Series 20, looking at the groups and teams of the 2023 African Cup, played in Ivory Coast in January 2024. This episode is looking at Group C, Senegal, Cameroon, Guinea, and Gambia. Here we go. It's the International Soccer Preview. I'm Kevin. And I'm Kira. This is Series 20 of our MediaCast. It's the short version of the same series, Series 20, which looks at the groups and teams for the 2023 African Nations Cup. Even though it's titled this way, it actually takes place in January 2024. Yes, and we're looking at Group C, which includes Senegal, Cameroon, Guinea, and Gambia. In the short version here, we're replacing parts one and two of the full-length version uh, with a short summary of each team's history and a look at their recent form. Uh, in the full-length version, Connor and Kevin introduced the teams in part one with some information about each country's location, population, and so on. Part two is a history of each team with a deep dive into African Cup Finals history. They then look into performances in recent tournaments and end with an overview of the players. Yeah, in this media cast, we will we'll tag on part three from that full length discussion. And that's Connor and my uh, discussion of the prospects of each team. So if this short version grabs your interest, keep an eye out for the full length version and players version, which will come later in 2023. Yeah, and we're also working on Series 19, which is on the groups, teams, and players of the AFC Asian Cup. We've published short and long versions of the groups and teams and are in the process of publishing a look at the players of each team. We've also started our series on qualifying for the 2026 World Cup. So check the show notes for links to those. Okay, so without delay, let's get into the four teams of Group C of the African Cup Finals. Right, and we begin with Senegal. So Senegal overall is a second tier team, but really waver between a, being a first tier and a third tier team. They've had a three periods of strength, though only two of them are reflected in World Cup play. A good start in African Cup does not count as it was too short. It was better than the long week period that followed, uh, the early 90s saw three trips in a row beyond the group stage of the African Cup, but that period didn't reflect much in World Cup play. Four trips past the African Cup, Cup group stage from 2000 to 2006 reflected only in their 2002 World Cup appearance, though both of these periods did see more competitive performances in their World Cup play. Their quarterfinal finish in the 2002 World Cup was a glory beyond imagine, reflected uh, in their second place finish in the African Cup that same year. This is the stuff of a top tier team, but they've only legitimized that in current times, their third strong period, and arguably the strongest with an African Cup title, and for the first time, two trips in a row to World Cup and a round of 16 finish in 2022. Yeah, talking about their recent performance, after a flat period from 2008 to 2015, they finally passed the group stage in the African Cup in 2017. They also reached the World Cup in 2018 for the first time since 2002. They have grown even stronger with a second place, then a first place finish in the African Cup, their first title. Shortly after, they reached their second World Cup in a row, where they passed the group stage to reach the round of 16. Their confident qualification for the 2023 African Cup shows that they are maintaining this level. Right, so they are in good form, and we move on to uh, Cameroon. The very fact that they're in pot two shows that they're not in as good form. Let's take a look. Uh, if we describe their African Cup successes uh, in slow rolling waves, we have to say that they did not match well with their World Cup record. Uh, reaching the African Cup twice in the early 70s was during a period where they were only mildly competitive in World Cup competition, but did not make it past the initial stages. 
Their first World Cup qualification in 1982 came before the high wave of the mid-80s where they won two African Cup titles but didn't reach the World Cup. And their best performance of reaching the 1990 World Cup quarterfinals was actually a lull in their African Cup period. Their back-to-back -back African Cup titles in 2000 and 2002 came during a period where they were qualifying for the World Cup, but not passing the group stage. A low of not reaching the World Cup in 2006 was followed by their best African Cup uh, during the period, second place in 2008. African Cup from 2012 to 2015 did not affect, sorry, I should say not reaching the African Cup from 2012 to 2015 did not affect their consistent World Cup qualification. And finally, their surprise African Cup title in 2017 compares with the non-qualification for the World Cup in 2018, only their second non-appearance at the World Cup since 1990. Yeah, and looking at their recent performance, the extended wave metaphor for the African Cup continues with the tide remaining fairly high since that surprise win in 2017. A round of 16 finish in 2019 and a third place as host in 2021 are not great, but are not poor either. Uh, the general mismatch with the World Cup results continues in failing to reach the World Cup in 2018, uh, but their general pattern of doing so resumed in 2022. All right, so Cameroon and uh, we move on to Guinea. The third team, Guinea is a second tier team, underperforming in World Cup play and overperforming in African Cup play. As a second tier team, they should sometimes be challenging in the final round or even reaching the Cup, the World Cup, at some point in their history. However, they have never come close uh, except once in 1998. In the African Cup, a second tier team usually reaches the cup and sometimes passes the group stage. They've reached more than half of the cup since 2004 and have overperformed by usually passing the group stage. Uh, they've missed only three cups since 2004, an improvement over their pre millennium record of reaching only the odd cup. However, their second place finish in 1976 remains their best result as the quarterfinals have proven their limit in recent times. Looking at their recent performance, Guinea continues to underperform in World Cup, finishing last behind Libya in their semi-final group in 2018 and third behind Gambia in 2022. African Cup shows an overperformance, passing the group stage the last two times, but they continue to find their limit um, in the step beyond that. 2022 presented a good opportunity but they disappointingly lost to Gambia in the 2022 round of 16. Right, and uh, speaking of Gambia, that is our fourth team in this group. So let's take a look at their uh, summary uh, and strength, their history and strength. Gambia is a fourth tier team uh, for most of their history and even in recent times. However, they have had a few third tier campaigns and have sometimes surprised with stronger campaigns yet. Fourth-tier teams are generally knocked out in preliminary rounds, and that is the case for most of their World Cup history, even in recent campaigns. It was true for much of their African Cup history too. However, from 2004, they've been a bit more competitive in their campaigns, something only true of their 2010 and 2014 World Cup runs. Uh, in these third-tier performances, they are competitive at the game level, sometimes even with strong teams in Gambia's case, but they do not pass the round and often finish near the bottom. In their, 2020, uh, sorry, in their 2010 World Cup campaign, uh, they were competitive with top teams Algeria and Senegal, the three just finishing one point apart at the top of the table, but only Algeria advancing. In 2021, Gambia not only qualified for the African Cup, but passed the round of 16 to reach the quarterfinals. That seemed another flash in the pan when they were knocked out in the preliminary round of the 2022 World Cup. But another solid third-tier performance saw them reach the 2023 African Cup. 
Looking at their recent performance, um, on close analysis, a more competitive campaign in 2019 African Cup qualifying did, in retrospect, foreshadow their successful cup qualification in 2021 to a degree. But preliminary round exits in the 2018 and 2022 World Cups made it seem a fleeting improvement. Their success in the 2021 African Cup, going all the way to the quarterfinals and successfully reaching the cup again in 2023, speaks to general improvement, though it's not shown in their World Cup play. All right, and that brings us to the end of the summaries and our look at the recent form of the teams. And now we'll pass you over to Connor and Kevin's discussion of the prospects of these teams. Kind of have to uh, create our own odds, Connor. Yeah, well, we'll do that through our discussion. <laughs> Let's uh, begin with that. And uh, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to begin with uh, Senegal. Uh, are in a good period right now. They're not always as strong uh, as they are right now. Do you think they will hold through this tournament or kind of return to the mean a little bit? I do think they'll they'll hold through this tournament. I think they'll have some good confidence as defending champions and doing reasonably well in the World Cup, even without Sadio Mane. They've got very strong players, um, you know, playing in top leagues. Um, and the other thing with Senegal, um, you know, they did get off to a slightly weaker start, um, as we saw in the last African Cup. Uh, not all that convincing in the group stage, but then they grew into the tournament. So I think Senegal will be strong. I definitely think they'll get out, but it's possible we may see them grow into the tournament again, which could open them up to uh, points being dropped at the group stage. Uh, it's a good point. I think if they, if they start this tournament uh, the same way, they could uh, suffer by it uh a little bit more than they did in the last african cup we we said this is a pretty tough group and um uh yeah i guess that that should be a bit of a concern for them uh yeah, yeah and my own thinking on senegal is uh i i'm not sure uh, i have to do kind of the player podcast i mean uh sadio mane uh, moved to bayern munich but then didn't do well there right yeah and he's now in saudi arabia yeah, and so I'm wondering about a couple of the other big names on this team. I've kind of lost track of the uh, defender Koulibaly. Do you know where he got to? He, I think, is in Saudi Arabia as well. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, some of their big players uh, may be aging out a bit. As you say, they have a very strong squad, and uh, they managed without Sadio Mane uh, well enough in the World Cup. So they seem to have the supporting cast uh, to keep up the strength, but um, I am a bit concerned uh, in that Cameroon historically is a stronger team, so if Senegal kind of doesn't keep up that form and uh, Cameroon kind of rediscovers better form, uh, it could add up to a bit of a challenge here, but as you say, I mean, it's very unlikely that they wouldn't pass the group stage. Yeah, I mean, with Cameroon, you have you know, with Senegal, two teams that made it to the last four of the African Cup actually finished in the top three, and two teams that were among the five to reach the last World Cup. So it's going to be very interesting. Cameroon are a good team. Um, I think that Cameroon versus Senegal is going to be one of the kind of the games of the first round or has a, the potential to be. Um, and, you know, Cameroon, you know, strong team that they typically come in as a group one seed as you as you alluded to so they're often favorites to win the group so um i think it could be quite competitive i'd probably favor senegal but i think cameroon are are strong and and capable of winning the group yeah i kind of agree with you i'd have to give the nod to cameroon uh, at this point another thing is that uh even though they did both pass the group stage in the world cup uh senegal was a bit more convincingly so uh than cameroon yeah, I guess Cameroon actually didn't pass the group stage, but they did have that famous win over Brazil. Oh, yes, right. I had that in mind, and I thought that got them through. But right. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, Senegal kind of edging on on every point now, except for the uh, longer history, uh, and we'll see how that, how that plays out. Uh, do you give any chance for Guinea or Gambia to uh, challenge those two? Uh, definitely. I, I think that both teams are, are capable. Um, I see Gambia as, uh, you know, unpredictable in a sense, you know, 
you know, they could lose the game four nothing, or they could win one nothing on a late goal. Like neither kind of surprises me. So, um, yeah, and and Guinea are, you know, we kind of talked about them as a second tier team. You know, a team that often gets out of the group stage. So, yeah, I I see um, I see it possible that Gambia or Guinea kind of takes points or even beats anyone in this group. I think they're capable of it on their day. Yeah, I think especially taking points uh, uh, may be the key. Uh, I mean, I think Gambia could actually take points in the form of beating the team. You never know what they're going to do. Uh, but it seems like they'll at least play a spoiler role because they're they're a bit difficult to manage. Um, and Guinea, um, to me, was a bit of a stronger team in the past. So a bit like Cameroon, if they rediscover a bit of their form, they could... Uh, uh, challenge uh, beyond their pot three uh, level here. So I, I also give both of them a chance. There's always room for them to pass in third place, which I believe uh, Guinea did last time. Uh, no, they finished in second. Uh, um, anyway, there is room for a third place team. Uh, a third place team would be uh, uh, one of the teams in, in a competitive group. Uh, is that right? Typically, yeah, typically, you know, a group where one team dominates and one team falls completely flat, you may not always see it, but a competitive group with, with everyone takes points off each other. I mean, last time Senegal's group saw points go 5 4 4 3 and three teams advance. So a right. situation like that would definitely see a third place team advance um, again. Yeah, yeah, I kind of think anything could happen in this group. Uh, Senegal could dominate. Uh, and and leave the others behind, but there's enough evidence to suggest uh, uh, a bit of competitiveness here. Yeah, how do you see um, uh, Gambia and Guinea in terms of relative strength? Uh, Evil or I, Gambia uh, higher. I gotta say, I, I mean, Gambia is is for the most part a fourth tier team. So we saw them get knocked out in the preliminary round in the 2018 and 2022 Cups. It, I'm not saying that they're, they're kind of lucky to be here, but uh, I mean they're lucky to be here because they almost got knocked out by Chad in the preliminary round of this competition too. Um, you know, so I do think they can be troublesome, but I think on the whole they're, they're a fairly weak team and, and um, you know, really played above their level in 2021. But I'm not convinced that they can really uh, do that again. So I consider Guinea quite a bit stronger. I see Guinea um, uh, possibly passing through uh, in third place or even challenging Cameroon because they're a bit inconsistent. Uh, but I don't see Gambia really doing that. How about you? I, I certainly give Gambia the um, the surprise factor. I think they, they could be competitive, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them win one out of these three games. And if they do, who knows where that could take them. So, um, you know, I, Gambia is a little bit harder to predict. I don't think Guinea are, you know, at the level of Senegal or Cameroon, and that may show, but um, yeah. I almost favor Gambia for a shock result. Oh, Guinea. really? Well, I mean, they did beat Guinea in the round of 16 uh, last time, so you can't discount that. Yeah. All right, well, put your money where your mouth is. Are you telling me that you're picking uh, Gambia in third, perhaps even to go through in third? Come on, lay it out, Connor. I'm going to say Senegal first, Cameroon second, Gambia third, and Guinea fourth. Wow. Um, Gambia also has a Cardiff City player in Ebu Adam, so maybe that biases me somewhat. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I would like to see Gambia's good run um continue i i think they they'll be competitive i think this will be a very competitive group i'm very excited for this group lots of good teams um lots of teams looking to build on the last african cup um but that's the the order as i predict it all right well that's bold indeed uh i'm gonna go uh despite all our discussion uh according to pot over uh, part order although i do think it will be uh competitive here but i'm going uh, Senegal, Cameroon, Guinea, and Gambia. Uh, and I think there is room for uh, surprises here. Uh, you know, the surprise you're calling is is Gambia uh, challenging, but I think a surprise could happen at any level. Cameroon finishing first over 
um, over Senegal or Guinea over over Cameroon, but I think the uh, standard order is uh, is what I would go with. We might be eating our words, though. We should really be making a, a little pool, uh, a points pool to see how we did <laughs> in yeah, our predictions. True. I do agree, though, that this, I wouldn't, I think this group will be competitive um, at every level, you know, and I yeah. think all six games will probably be competitive, too. I yeah, me too. At least. Yeah, I think it'll be a really interesting group. Uh, um, uh, uh, and I wouldn't really be shocked by by any uh, outcome. I, I don't think even Gambia finishing first wouldn't, wouldn't utterly shock me, you know. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, a competitive uh, uh, Group C here, and uh, we will move on to Group D next and hopefully uh, see as exciting a group there as we've seen here. Um, anything or more to add, or should we sign off, Connor? We'll sign off. I think this will be a great group, and I'm looking forward to it. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10-minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. We would like to thank Pixabay and Alexei Ivanov of Mappa Music for the wonderful background music accompanying this media cast.